folks, it's Lilia here. I'm back with a completely new video I've shot for those of you who have dedicated their life path to teaching English as a foreign language. If you're a little bit like me, you might have discovered that most of those coursebook pre-planned activities have nothing to do with the dynamic content of your lessons most of the time. So you may be teaching something, but it might not be necessarily valid to your students' needs and priorities. Or you might be just doing that in such a boring way that balls shit out of your students and you're looking for some interesting ways to jazz up your lessons so that's why I am here so I'm going to share some lovely techniques with you that might really help you add a polishing and a very nice creative touch to any of your lessons. When I was a novice teacher I went through a phase where I tried to rely on the textbook every time I had to teach a lesson. I was doing that because I was not particularly confident about my own both speaking skill and teaching skill. So I thought, hmm, I'd better rely on those authors because they know how to teach a proper lesson, don't they? So what do I know? But the reality showed me very, very soon that I really had to come up with interesting, creative ways of connecting one subject to another subject so that my students did not feel bored at all. So I started working on my own creativity. And so far I've got to a point where I feel like I, I have created a whole new perspective when it comes to language teaching. And I really hope to share some of my insights with you in this little video I filmed. So first of all, in order to teach creatively, you need to develop this holistic approach to what you can see in the classroom and to how you interact with your students. By holistic approach, I just mean that everything, every object, every concept is multidimensional. Nothing in this world is just one faceted, it's just normally multifaceted. And if you develop this feeling and ability to see those multiple facets in every object in your classroom, you'll stand a higher chance of creating beautiful lessons and just, you know, conjuring up beautiful transitions between various activities, whatever you choose to run in your classes. So here's how it works. Without having to imagine your classroom, just look around yourself. The area where you are right now, so just take a look around yourself and see what, what you can spot around you. For instance, in my room, I could very easily go for a watering can, a case where I keep my glasses, and some sticky tape. Now, what you have to do is think about three alternative usages for every single object. You could only start with one alternative usage if you're not feeling particularly comfortable doing this little exercise. So, for example, if we think sticky tape, you could use it in a direct manner. My goodness, this is turning into a proper DOI video. Or you could put it onto someone's mouth if you're gonna keep a person hostage. The glasses though, you can wear them to see things better if you're short-sighted and long-sighted or you can simply put them on to give you an intelligent look. For a watering can though, it might be really tricky because the purpose is fairly direct. But this is even better because we can show off our creativity even more. What we could do is decorate it like a tiny elephant for a kid's party. You see the point? So you could be doing this for yourself to improve on your own creativity. Or you could run this activity in a little classroom, you know, with kids or even with adults, where everybody would have a little bit of freedom to pick the objects they want and just creating the whole stories around those objects. And that generally will turn into a lovely lesson. So let's see where you end up. Being able to look around you and see the whole picture of what's going on around you is a great strategy to take you from a boring lesson to a super duper creative lesson. Okie dokie, so here's another one. Linking the unlinkable. This is such a great activity that would help you as a teacher develop your own creativity, your own creative ability, so that you can connect the unconnectable part of the lesson in a coherent and an interesting manner. So what do you think a plant has in common with a cat. 
obviously many of you might say that cats love munching on plants. So if we're thinking lesson wise, how can you turn that into a transition? For example, if you have been studying cats or animals or anything, you know, like pets, and then the following topic is say environment. So that's how you can link the two. So you see, don't worry if you can't do this at first. So it all takes practice. I want you to bear in mind a few things. First and foremost, there are no right or wrong answers. The whole point of creativity is that you can do whatever you want, whatever rocks your boat. So you can just generally create anything you like, even if it has not been created earlier, which is the purpose of creativity by definition. One thing that I don't want this video to turn it to is me telling you which activities you should run with your class. I just really want you to use this video as a bit of inspiration to help your lessons shine and radiate happiness to your learners. So I really hope you do your best. And here is a little game suggestion I have for us that we can run in the, in the comment section down below so we can practice the former exercise and the latter exercise too if we want to. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to come up with two objects or two things or a thing and a concept that are unlinkable on the surface. What I want you to do is put those pairs into the comment section one by one and that would challenge other viewers to come and comment what those things have in common. For example, a cat and love. So think where that overlaps. Okay, thanks a lot guys. I've had such a great time recording this video for you. I hope you have learned a little bit. So share this video with a friend and come and visit my blog where I share teaching insights with students' well-being in mind. I hope you have a super productive week and I hope you enjoy your teaching as much as your students do. Bye!